Today, I'm going to make a very special recipe for all of you. It's actually from my cookbook, Mississippi Vegan, recipes and stories from a Southern boy's heart. Ding! So this is my skillet okra recipe. And what I love about it is you can use different vegetables for it and it's a really great go-to quick and easy recipe. So what we're gonna do is we're basically just featuring local fresh okra. And I wanted to show you that you can push it and do it with another vegetable with these shishitos. So I picked these up at the farmer's market this morning. So they are fresh and ready to go. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pan fry them in a cast iron skillet. So this recipe is called skillet okra and then skillet shishitos. So we're gonna use an oil to pan fry them. And because we're getting this at a high heat, you wanna use something like avocado oil that has a high smoking point. Otherwise, you're gonna create a lot of smoke and your fire alarm's gonna go off and you're gonna get in trouble with the fire department and then don't do that. So first, we're gonna turn, did it go? It's on, we're good. We're gonna turn this, so medium high, but a little bit above medium high. And then we're gonna add a good drizzle of the avocado oil. Now before we started this video, I chopped up a few cloves of garlic. This is totally optional. I obviously love garlic. But if you put it in at this point, before you cook the okra, it's gonna burn. So that's not good. So here we have some beautiful local burgundy okra. Now sometimes if okra gets too big, it can get fibrous, but I, I tend to find that with the burgundy okra, it stays tender even when it gets large. So the one thing you do want to cut off is this tip because this can get pretty fibrous. So I cut that off. But I think one misconception is people don't eat the tips, but you can absolutely eat the tips. So I'm just going to chop away. I like to do mine bite-sized pieces. Some of you are asking if you can use frozen okra for this. I wouldn't, because frozen okra is not the same. And by the time it defrosts, it's gonna be kind of soft. And you don't, you want it to be dry when it goes into the pan, because we're trying to crisp it up. The other thing you can do when you're shopping for okra at the farmer's market is just take a bite, try it. I, it's delicious raw. Especially when it's young, it's, it's tender, but these, like I said, stay tender. Mm. So if you're ever shopping and the, and the farmer's like, yeah, it's good okra, I'm like, okay, let me see. Because sometimes I've taken a bite and it's fibrous. And then I yell at them. So we have the pan nice and hot. What we're gonna do, we're gonna throw it in. Hear that sizzle? Okay, now we'll let it sit. So to season this, we're gonna use sea salt, black pepper, and a splash of rice vinegar. I love this color change, you see it? See how it's turning green? Great, now we're gonna add a sprinkling of sea salt, black pepper, a few cracks, splash of rice vinegar. Rice vinegar is mild. It's slightly sweet, but it's a great acid to use. And it works really, really well with vegetables. Okay, now for the secret ingredient, nutritional yeast. So this is savory, nutty, cheesy, delicious. And we're not gonna put a lot, just a little bit. You want the okra to move. See, it's kind of moving a little bit and it's screaming at you. You can hear it.
See the browning that's happening? That's what you want. That's what we're looking for. Once it gets to this point, we're gonna add in an optional ingredient. This isn't in the book. So this is a special tip you get from me to you here in the Mississippi Vegan Test Kitchen. We're gonna add some garlic. We're gonna toss it. We're gonna keep it moving. Immediately it smells amazing. And this is a great way to use garlic because you kind of want that really pungent raw hit. And even though I love caramelized garlic, I also love it when it, it's slightly raw, but it's still cooked through. A little bit longer. Okay, we're good. Now I'm gonna turn it off. Look at this. Skillet of breath. We're done. So let's give it a taste. I'm gonna see if it needs any more salt. I feel like I kind of nailed it, but let's not get ahead. It's per <laughs> It's perfect. So let's get a pretty ball. Pretty ball. Make sure to get all that crispy garlic at the bottom. I love okra. And if you don't like okra, you should try this recipe. Because I don't find it slimy. And I've come to realize some dishes are more slimy than others when using okra, especially if you cook it for a long time. But at the end of the day, you either like it or you don't. So, I don't wanna fight. I'm not gonna argue, argue with you. If you don't like okra, then you should just do this with shishito peppers. You know, it's like. So I'm gonna come try this. Is it too hot? No. Isn't it great? Cause it's like, it's not slimy, is it? No. I think someone said the vinegar helps. I love recipes that really celebrate vegetables that are local in season at the peak of their ripeness. It's just so good. They're delightful. Moving right along, we're going to do skillet shishito peppers. So we're gonna basically do the same recipe, but we're gonna use these delightful little peppers. So these are not spicy, they're very mild. And we're gonna leave the handle on because that's going to be the handle that we use to eat the pepper. Now I will warn you, one to two peppers in a batch this size might be spicy. It's happened to me. So you just kind of have to roll with it and have fun. Most of them are not spicy at all. They're very mild. And when we serve these today, we're gonna sprinkle them with flaky Malden salt, and we're gonna squeeze them with just a little bit of lemon juice. So let's heat up the skillet. Once again, remember we're using avocado oil. This is a high smoking point. So this says high heat cooking oil to 500 degrees. Because I've made this before with olive oil and it definitely does smoke more and then it sets your, your alarm off. Great thing about these shishito peppers, we, don't, we rinse them and dry them and that's it. You want to make sure they're dry though so that they um, brown nicely, but we don't have to prep them at all. You could push this recipe in a lot of different variations. You could toss them with lime juice and maybe some chili powder. You could absolutely add some minced garlic and shallots. I mean, really, it's endless. You could put some coriander and cumin. You could really push it and pull it in whatever way you want. Let's just test one. It's not there yet. <gasps> okay, we're good. So we'll make sure they're all touching. And then we're just gonna leave it. Okay, ready? 
Okay. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to blister them. See? Blistering the shishito gives them more flavor. Now, we're trying to balance this. We don't want to overcook them because then they'll just get mushy. We still want them to have a little bit of a crunch, but we're trying to get that raw taste out. These are blistered. Come look at these. Look at that. These are almost done. I just kind of want to make sure all the sides are blistered. And see how, see how well this oil is behaving? The like steam's coming up, but there's not a lot of smoke. All right, I think we're done. Now we're going to add the lemon juice. So I like to squeeze my lemon. And then this is a trick. I just cut around the seeds. salt so this is a flaky sea salt that's it mm. they are slightly better but it's it's a good bitter. And the flaky salt's crunchy. Oh, look at that one, see? I feel bad, because I'm you're literally giving these peppers like third degree burns. Mm. So here you have it, my skillet okra from my very own cookbook and a very similar recipe, blistered shishito peppers. I'll see you next time. Bye.